For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. The UN Climate Change Conference of Parties, or COP26, commenced on Sunday, October 31st in the Scottish city of Glasgow. The conference is happening at a crucial moment when the world is running out of time to tackle the climate crisis. The unabated high emission levels, the alarming rise in sea level and extreme weather conditions denote the deteriorating global climate and irreversible changes to the environment. These issues demand immediate, serious and effective policies. The conference began just a day after the G20 economies failed to commit to a 2050 target to halt net carbon emissions to prevent the most extreme global warming. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres addressed the summit attendees on Monday and emphasized, we are digging our own graves. Our planet is talking to us and telling us something. And so are people everywhere. Climate action tops the list of people's concerns across countries, age, and gender. We must listen, and we must act, and we must choose wisely. On behalf of these and future generations, I urge you, choose ambition, choose solidarity, choose to safeguard our future and save humanity. U.S. President Joe Biden called on world leaders to take up a transformational shift to clean energy amid questions over his own ability to implement the same at home. Our overriding purpose here in Glasgow is to uh, raise the ambitions uh, of our commitments to keep within reach our goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. According to the International Energy Agency, the U.S. is the second largest emitter of methane in the world, which accounts for 30 percent of global warming since pre-industrial times. While leading the globe in also carbon emissions, the United States continues to lag in implementing policies to curb emissions and transition to green energy. In fact, around 2,500 new oil and gas permits were authorized in the first six months of the Biden administration. Many activists around the world have also pointed to the overwhelming role the U.S. military plays in causing environmental destruction and devastation. It is the largest institutional consumer of fossil fuels in the world and emits more greenhouse gases than most mid-sized nations to keep its 800-plus military bases running. Meanwhile, Bolivian President Luis Arce pointed out that the climate crisis cannot be contained with green capitalism or more global markets, but only by moving towards an alternative model to capitalism. This is important because, in another way, vamos a reproducir el sistema capitalista y no vamos a resolver los problemas que tienen varios de nuestros países en desarrollo donde justamente los mecanismos de mercado han sido los que no han funcionado. For us the indigenous people are the main issue in the climate change. The most affected people in, in all over the world are indigenous communities, indigenous people. So for us it is important to include live people, not only, uh, you know, as we were talking to many uh, uh, investors or people dedicated to environmental and all over the world, they are trying, uh, talking about fishing, they are talking about forest, but they are not talking about people. And we think that the main uh, focus of our policies should be indigenous people, should be people. Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley, a key leader representing the interests of some of the most affected by climate change, the small islands, also reiterated that the failure of rich countries to not deliver a promised $100 billion a year to help vulnerable nations cope with climate change will have deadly consequences. The pandemic has taught us that national solutions to global problems do not work. We come to Glasgow with global ambition to save our people and to save our planet. But we now find three gaps on mitigation, climate pledges or NDCs. Without more, we will leave the world on a pathway to 2.7 degrees. And with more, we are still likely to get to two degrees. These commitments made by some are based on technologies yet to be developed and this is at best reckless 
and at worst dangerous. On finance, we are $20 billion short of the $100 billion. And this commitment, even then, might only be met in 2023. On adaptation, adaptation finance remains only at 25%. Climate finance to frontline small island developing states declined by 25% in 2019. Failure to provide the critical finance and that of loss and damage is measured, my friends, in lives and livelihoods in our communities. This is immoral and it is unjust. If Glasgow is to deliver on the promises of Paris, it must close these three gaps. From November 7th to 10th, the COP26 coalition will host the People's Summit for Climate Justice. The summit aims to bring together the climate justice movement to discuss, learn, and strategize for system change. Climate activists from various organizations have gathered in the city of Glasgow to demand urgent measures to cut greenhouse gases emissions from the heads of state attending the meeting. Yeah, I'm here because I think this is the biggest health problem we've got. I'm a pediatrician. I'm particularly concerned about the health of children, which is suffering very badly now, here and now as a result of air pollution. We are in a climate emergency, and yet the way it's treated is it's like this is something we've got another 30 years, but we don't. We have eight, year, eight to 10 years at the most to really turn it right, and we're just not going fast enough. I think people recognize that. I think the people around here in George Square, I find, have been very receptive and have said the government isn't doing enough. So we have to say it very loud and clear to the government. Activists from Extinction Rebellion marched against J.P. Morgan investments in the fossil fuel industry. Several other groups have also announced marches and other forms of protest actions throughout the week. Protests are also being organized in other parts of the world.